my chemistry teacher kept talking about electron spin, spin up, spin down, spin half, this and that. But as I started reading Feynman lectures, I realized that it's impossible for electrons to ever spin. And so if I do this video right, by the end of it, we will gain a profound understanding of why electrons can never spin, and yet we talk as if they do. So let's begin. Let's start by asking Feynman. Feynman, why do you say that electrons can never ever spin? Well, Feynman will reply by saying, Mahesh, to answer that question, we need to ask a bigger question. According to you, what is spin? Exactly. And I would tell Feynman, well, Feynman, you know what spin is, like a, sp a spinning ball. Like that's what spin is. We know what spin is. But Feynman would remind us that we're talking about science, so we need to be very precise about our definition. So what exactly is spinning? Well, when you consider a spinning ball, like let's say when you consider a spinning basketball, what's happening is that every single particle of that basketball is moving in a circular path along a common center, and they all take the same time to finish the circle. Any group of particle, it doesn't even have to be an object, but any group of particle which does this, like for example, say a galaxy, where you can think of each star as a particle, we will say that the whole group of particle is spinning. You get what I mean? What's important over here is that these individual particles, they are not spinning. They are just going in a circular path, but they're doing it in such a way that they're all going in a circular path among the common center and they take the same time. When they do that, that group of particles is what we say is spinning. And so spinning, Feynman says, is an emergent property. What does that mean? Well, it means that even though the individual pieces of them, they're not spinning. For them, spin makes no sense. All they're doing is a circular path, and yet the group ends up spinning. Another example of an emergent property is life. If you consider cells, then you would see that individual pieces of the cell, none of them are alive, and yet the cell as a whole is alive. Life is an emergent property. Defining something exactly is a great way to have a rigorous conversation. And I use this in daily life now. So for example, when somebody tells me, I respect your elders, Mohesh, I ask them to define what respect is. When someone says that talk or talks about spiritual positive and negative energy, I ask them to define what energy is. Besides having a rigorous conversation, it's a very fun way to even sound smart and annoy people. Try it sometimes. Okay, now let's come to electrons. Feynman, why do you say electron can never spin? Well, because Feynman says electrons are truly the most fundamental particles of this universe. As far as we know it, that's what it is. They are not made up of any smaller particles. And we just saw if you want something to spin, that needs to have a group of particles and each of them need to go in a circular path. So you need a group of particles to execute a spin, but electrons, are truly fundamental particles, not made of any smaller pieces, then you don't have group of particles, then how, how can anything go in a circular path? It is impossible for an electron to spin, Feynman says. And this is hard for me to actually imagine. And I get now why it is hard for me to imagine. Even if I think of the tiniest or the tiniest particles that I can imagine, maybe a grain of sand, I can imagine that it can spin. And the reason is we live in a macroscopic world where the tiniest of the dot that you can imagine is made up of billions and billions of particles. And so it's impossible for at least me to imagine something that can never spin. But if you think about it, it makes sense. Truly fundamental particles, which are not made up of any smaller pieces, just cannot spin. And just that itself, if you think about it, is a head spinner. But now I ask Feynman then, if electrons don't spin, why do we act and talk as if they do? Well, Feynman says, because of one important fact, electrons behave like tiny magnets. They produce magnetic fields. Now at this point I would pause and I would tell Feynman, I know Feynman what you're trying to do. There's a saying that if you can't convince them, confuse them. So basically you start with some bunch of facts to gain some credibility, and then put them all together to confuse the heck out of people. This is how pseudoscience works, by the way. You know who I'm talking about. I'm not gonna name names, but that's basically how pseudoscientists propel their theory. 
And so Feynman, what has this fact that electrons behave like tiny magnets have anything to do that with what we are talking about, spin? And Feynman says, everything. Okay, fine. What is it? What, what, why are you talking about magnets, tiny magnets, electrons behaving like tiny magnets, Feynman? Well, because Feynman says, remember, we know where magnetism comes from. Magnetism comes from moving charges. And by the way, if you wonder why moving charges produce magnetic fields, then one of my recent, I made a video on this like 10 months back and it started blowing up. It became viral recently. I have no idea why it's becoming viral, but you can check that out. I have I've, I've, uh, I've tackled that, uh, how Einstein's relativity actually talks about it. But anyways, coming back, Feynman says, we know that moving charges produce magnetic field, but here we are talking about a single electron, which is not moving. A moving electron can produce magnetic field, but even a non-moving electron behaves like a tiny magnet. Why, where does that magnetism come from? Well, guess what? Guess what? If turns out that if you take a ball of charge and if you make it spin, then you have moving charges, then you have moving electrons. These moving electrons, moving charges, can produce magnetic field. And if you actually work out the kind of magnetic field that a ball, a spinning ball of charge produces, guess what? You get exactly the same kind of magnetic field as an electron produces. A spinning ball of charge behaves like a tiny magnet exactly like how an electron behaves, even though it's not spinning. And this is why we begin, we started, we started thinking that maybe electrons do possess some kind of a spin. Maybe not in the classical sense of how a ball spins, but maybe a new kind of spin, which we'll call the quantum spin. Now at this point, I would actually refute Feynman. And I would say, well, Feynman, why this obsession with spin? We have already shown that electrons cannot spin like a ball of charge because it is not, it is a fundamental particle. Then why this obsession? Maybe this is just a coincidence. Why can't we just say that, hey, you know what? Electrons behave like a tiny quantum magnet that doesn't come from anything. Isn't that a... S Isn't that a simpler viewpoint? Why is obsession with spin all the while? Forget about spin. What's the problem in just saying that electrons behave like tiny magnets that doesn't come from anything? And that's that. Well, Feynman says, there is a stronger reason why we think about electrons and spin. And for that, let's go back. Let's, let's talk about something that we are familiar with, a top. If you take a tabletop, which is not spinning and just let go of it, what happens? Well, it falls. Gravity puts a, for, a gravity puts a turning force on it, and the top just topples. Top topples. Nice. <laughs> okay. So if th if things are not spinning, they can easily succumb to turning forces. But what if you have a spinning top? Well, then it doesn't succumb to gravity. It doesn't topple. For example, look at this. You see a spinning top can stay upright, but instead it sort of just wobbles, right? Now we'll not talk about why this happens, but what this means is that if something is spinning, it has the ability to resist turning forces. It has the ability to resist torque. And what ends up, instead of toppling, what ends up happening is it just wobbles. Now, of course, the technical term for this wobbling motion that we just saw, it's called precision. Pre sorry, precession, it's called precession. So something that's turning, uh, something that, uh, that is spinning will only precess and it will be very hard to make it turn. It can resist turning forces. And this ability of something that spins that can resist turning forces is what we call angular momentum. And so a spinning top has angular momentum. And so Feynman says, look, we can actually test if something is spinning or not. Why debate about it? So if, if I have an object and I don't know whether it's spinning or not, all you have to do is just put a turning force on it. If it turns, then I know that it's succumbed to it and it's not spinning. 
But if it resists that turning, and if it keeps wobbling, if it processes, then I know it is spinning. So why not just test it on electrons? And I would say Feynman, great. All of this makes great sense. But how in the world are you gonna put a turning force on electrons, tiny electrons? And how in the world would we know what ended up happening, whether the electrons really turned or it wobbled? Well, Feynman says, remember how I said that electrons behave like a tiny magnet and it has everything to do with spin? Well, think about it. If electrons behave like a tiny magnet, then I can use giant external magnets and try to put a turning force on it. If I use a giant external magnet like this, then the poles repel each other, and look, these forces are trying to turn my electron tiny magnet. And now, if the electron does not have any angular momentum, then we should expect the electron to just turn, just succumb to that turning forces. On the other hand, if the electron does have some kind of an angular momentum, right, which resembles spin, then it wouldn't turn. Instead, it would just wobble like this, and then we would know that it has angular momentum. And how do we actually detect it? Well, it turns out that you can actually shoot electromagnetic waves and figure out whether the electrons is wobbling or not. It's pretty insane to think that humanity has come to a point where we can do these kinds of experiments. But anyways, we did this experiment and guess what we found? We found it wobbles! <laughs> Electrons wobble! <laughs> That's what we found! <laughs> what does it mean? Well, it means one and only one thing. Electrons have angular momentum. There is no escaping it anymore. They have angular momentum because of which they can resist turning forces, they can resist torques. And uh, the precession that the, uh, the electrons possess, if you want to look up, it's called Larmor precession. So you can look it up and you can look at the actual experiments that we did. But if you were to summarize everything, Feynman says, that we got two things now. One, electrons behave like a tiny magnet, very similar to how a spinning ball of charge would work. And secondly, they show, they wobble, and they show that they have angular momentum. How do you reconcile all of this? There's only one way. We have to say that electrons have some kind of a property which resembles spin, even though they don't really do. And even the math shows that the magnetic, uh, the tiny magnets that they produce, the strength of the tiny magnets, which is technically called the dipole moment, but don't worry about it, it is directly proportional to its angular, the quantum angular momentum. So there is no escaping it. It is evident that the electrons possess some kind of a quantum spin, and it's that quantum spin that gives rise to these tiny magnets the magnetic dipole moment. We can ask Feynman, Feynman, what's the best way to put it all together? Like, how do we reconcile all of this? This sounds very contradictory, right? That it, electrons don't spin, but they kind of do. Well, Feynman says we need to be very careful with the words, and here's one way, my understanding of what Feynman says. Well, what's the way to think about quantum spin? Well, think about quantum spin that the word says, electrons behave just like a spinning top, but it, doesn't really spin. And I ask Feynman, well, Feynman, how do I make sense of this? Feynman, how can something behave like it is spinning even though it's not? I don't have an intuition for this. And Feynman would tell us, remind us, that Mahesh, how can you have an intuition for a world that you're not exposed to? Our intuition comes from our limited understanding of how the macroscopic world behaves. How can, I, how can we possibly use that for the quantum world. But if you think about this, there shouldn't be a problem with this. It's kind of like saying that, hey, there is an animal on an alien world that looks like an elephant, that, that has a trunk like an elephant, that behaves like an elephant, that kind of looks like an elephant, that has ears like an elephant, but is not an elephant. And there's no contradiction over there. 
Like, it's perfectly reasonable to think that there could be animals out there on an alien world which we have no intuition for how they behave and what they look like, and they, they could resemble one of the animals that we are familiar with. I would like to end by just saying the reason we have a hard time understanding all of this is because you and I are like these two frogs in a well who have lived our whole life in a well and we think that the entire world behaves and looks just like the inside of a well. But when you try to come outside, you see a brand new world out there where you have no intuition for. But you go where your observations and experiments leads you to. I hope I have given you a slightly better understanding of what we mean by when electrons spin.